In the world of extreme sports, there is always one who pushes the limit further than the rest. When it comes to caving, that person is Nick Vieira, a 32-year-old from Canmore, Alberta, who's dedicated his life to mapping the hollows underground. To many, caving is a thrilling adventure. But what's really exciting is the promise one man and his discoveries hold for science. With only a sliver of light, you can barely make out the figure on the rock wall. A spidery shadow descending into the belly of a cave. Here, beneath the Sierra Mazatec Mountains of southern Mexico, a team of cavers fights through raging rivers inside the deepest cave in the Western Hemisphere. Among them, Nick Vieira. Welcome to San Agustin. This cave is pretty damn cool. This is where Nick comes alive. As you can see, the cave is a little bit uh, active. In the darkness of the underground, among the bats, stalagmites, and stalactites. Absolutely amazing. How many days a year are you caving? Oh, well over 200, at least, yeah. It's your hobby, it's your work, it's your everything. Yeah, yeah. And you, on those other days, I'm usually doing something about caving as well. And it's my turn to continue down. Awesome stuff. Alrighty, I guess you get to see my home. Nick's home is a well-used Jeep. So your gear is in here, your bed is in here, your food is in here. Yeah. Usually parked somewhere near Canmore, Alberta. <laughs> I have to sleep diagonally. This is the only way I fit in the back. He lives off expired army rations and four liters of chocolate milk every day. You love caving more than you love the notion of a roof over your head. Yeah. A lot of people would think that's crazy. Yeah. They forget about these places. This is beautiful. You know, I mean, I live in the mountains. Yeah, you get hail, you get lightning, you get winds, but it's, it's home. When we met up with him, Nick was preparing to lead a team of experienced cavers on a multi-day expedition exploring and mapping new passageways in one of the most unique caves in Canada, Booming Ice Chasm. It is a rare ice-covered cave hidden high up in the side of a mountain near the BC-Alberta border. The cave was discovered in 2005 by a friend of Nick's who, while using Google Earth, noticed a dark spot on the mountain. What will make today a good day? Everything keeps going. The cave keeps going. We don't find an end. You don't want to find an end? No, absolutely not. We want to keep, keep mapping, keep exploring. What will make today a bad day? Getting hurt. Is that a risk? Oh, yeah. There's no helicopter that'll help you in there. Just reaching the cave is a test of endurance. A grueling trek that is simply up. I feel exhausted. This is uh, vertical and it's three hours long and this is heavier than I would like. On the final push to the cave entrance, you have to traverse a heart racing cliff bend. That's not stable. Hugging the side of the mountain as it drops off only inches from your feet. Wow. Yeah, let's go this way. The only thing more intimidating than the approach is the entrance to the cave itself, which opens up like the mouth of the mountain. Wow. This is it. Yeah. Wow! Booming ice chasm. 
a one meter rocky ledge is all that stands between you, the cave, and the edge of the cliff. With their harnesses on, the cavers drop 200 meters into darkness. On rope. Copy that. Turning lights on. As they turn on their headlamps, a sight unfolds like nothing you have ever laid eyes on. What a gorgeous cave this place is. Absolutely amazing. A glittering ice palace, the walls shimmering with ice crystals, and a chandelier-like waterfall towering in the corner. Rope free. Why is it called Booming Ice Chasm? The sounds inside, there's just this massive booming echo. On rope. So it makes communication quite difficult sometimes. Hey, oh. The cavers move cautiously, using crampons for traction and ice screws to attach their ropes. That's, that's so crazy, you can see us mining to it. Oh, yeah. While these are seasoned cavers, for some here, it's their first time on ice. Nick and his partner Katie quickly turn their attention to a waterfall in the corner. The goal, to climb it, map it, and see where it goes. Because Nick is leading this climb, there is no rope overhead. He has to attach one as he goes. And so there is potential for a sizable fall. One of the biggest threats is what you call the P word. Yes, panic. Not a good thing. It's the ultimate mind narrowing. You stop thinking, lose focus, can't respond to directions. So right now, how I feel, a little nervous, I guess. Calves are burning. One more. Nick is hyper aware of his every move, knowing that with every strike of his ice axe, he puts his partner below in direct line of one of the biggest hazards in caving. I'm gonna drop some ice here in a moment. Ice. You kick a rock on a sheet of ice and... It's a rocket. Hello! Icicle. What? Who's that? With a final push, Nick reaches the top and finds what he was hoping for. There's the room. We got darkness. What looks from the bottom to be a dead end opens up into a hidden chamber. Nick is the first person to ever step foot here. Wow, beautiful in here. 3.02096 degrees. He measures and maps every aspect of the room. A distance. 9.83. The waterfall's hidden chamber, no longer a secret. As Nick descends, his focus shifts to the most dangerous part of the exploration yet. This is it. bigger than last year. This time, he's the only member of the team to venture ahead. When there's a pool of water in the corner of an ice cave, most people head in the other direction. You jump in. Yeah, got to see if it goes anywhere. The caves don't end when there's water. 
wearing only a thin wetsuit, Nick prepares for the dive. The temperature of the water, 0 0.4 degrees Celsius. In any cave, hypothermia is a real risk. But in this case, when Nick is wet, cold, and has nowhere to warm up, it is even greater. After several minutes, he starts to lose feeling at his feet and decides it's time to get out. The lake will have to wait for another expedition. It would be 13 hours before the glimmer of headlamps guides the team down to camp. Tomorrow, they will make the trek again. And this time, it's what they take with them that holds such promise. The discovery that Nick and his team make inside the cave and what it could mean for modern medicine. With only a few hours of sleep, Nick Vieira is back in the depths of the icy abyss. Booming Ice Chasm, a rare ice cave in the Rockies, only accessible three months of the year. So how old is this cave? It's ancient, millions of years. Millions, millions of, years. of years old. Yeah. But the mystery of what time has locked underground fascinates more than just cavers. I want to find the answer. I'm so curious about who live, I mean, in terms of bacteria, bacterial community, who live in there? And what, what are they doing in there? Anne Cheapsom is a microbiologist at Thompson Rivers University in Kamloops, BC, and the leading scientist in the country looking to caves to discover new antibiotics. It is from soil that almost all antibiotics originate, created from the bacteria or fungi in the earth. During the golden age of antibiotics from the 1940s to 1960s, soil samples led to the creation of most of the antibiotics we use today. But since then, while drug resistance has been steadily growing, discovery has dropped off dramatically. And so some theorize if we want to find new types of bacteria, we have to look in new and extreme places, like caves. So Nick called me one day and said that, hey, I'm actually finding a new passage in this, you know, amazing cave. Do you want samples? And I said, yes, it's a no-brainer. That cave is Raspberry Rising hidden within the Columbia mountain range two hours west of Banff. To get there, you have to travel across an avalanche chute. To get inside, you have to dive. The cave is an intricate maze of lakes and tunnels adorned with some of the most impressive decorations in Canada. <laughs> Look at that stalagmite. <laughs> Woo! It's here that Nick and his team place petri dishes and return four months later 
to collect the first round of samples for Anne. 4.6 degrees Celsius. Back at Anne's lab, that soil is made into a solution and transferred onto plates. For a month, it's left in an incubator, allowing bacteria to grow. You can see that there are many types of bacteria, the yellow one, um, cream one, smaller one, big one. All of these came out of a cave? Yes. The question is, is this a new strain of bacteria capable of fighting a superbug? To find out, Anne enlists the help of Jerry Wright, chemical biologist at McMaster University in Hamilton. What's the risk of a superbug? The risk is that you end up where diseases that normally you could, you could treat in the past, that we took for granted that we could get rid of, we can't treat anymore. And so people are either getting very, very sick because of it, and their illnesses are lasting much longer, uh, and in some cases they're actually dying from it. This is happening? Right now. To Canadians? Absolutely. According to the World Health Organization, the number and spread of drug-resistant diseases is accelerating, with more essential medicines failing. This is a situation that's only going to get worse. And the only solution to it is new drugs. Already, there are encouraging results coming out of caves in Italy, India, and New Mexico. At Anne and Jerry's labs, the screening is still in the very initial stages. If they find a new strain of bacteria, it could take 15 or more years before an antibiotic gets to market. Still, the early signs are nothing short of extraordinary. When you pull this out of the incubator and you see results like this, what's your reaction? I was dancing. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I was happy. And my students were all happy. Of 266 bacteria isolated from the Raspberry Rising Cave, nine produce a chemical that kills a superbug. If you see the clear zone around the cave bacteria, that means that the cave bacteria can kill this particular bad bacteria. This is Staphylococcus. Yes, this one is methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. It's drug resistant. And it's fighting it away. This could go on to be a drug. It could. That you and I take one day. It could, potentially. It's why Nick keeps gathering new samples. Weird people like me get to go to these weird places that they may not necessarily be able to go. Hopefully they'll discover something uh, interesting or important or helpful with this. The next round from booming ice chasm. It could be um, a treatment for Alzheimer's. It could be nothing. It could be a new antibiotic to work towards uh, a common illness. We have no idea. And while Nick and Anne have yet to meet, they share a fascination with the underworld and its secrets, which until now have gone unknown. And there is more on our website about this story, including the lightning storm that hit us while we were filming. You can find that, along with a behind-the-scenes look at how our crews managed to capture those spectacular images at global16by9.com. We'll be right back. Thank <laughs> you.